Good evening. Welcome. In addition to the intentions you bring to this Mass, the priest's intention is for the repose of the soul of Therese Petris Levassar. Please stand. The first hymn is on page 756 in the Gather. Morning has broken, page 756. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we gather this evening to celebrate our Eucharist, we join with the Church in continuing to rejoice in the new life won through us through these Easter mysteries. Throughout this week, we have been celebrating the octave of Easter, rejoicing each day liturgically as if it were Easter Sunday. So great is the gift of the resurrection and the newness of life that is given to us. My sisters and brothers, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You came to gather the nations in the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast Kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. Thanks. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You believe, Thomas, because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, 
Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. One of my favorite artists is the 17th century painter Caravaggio, and during his lifetime, he painted a number of paintings depicting various biblical scenes. He had a knack of being able not only to capture the biblical scene in and of itself, but then to add such detail to help one to be able to enter more fully not only into the picture, but into the story. And certainly Pope Francis is also a big fan of Cavargio and often speaks about his painting of the call of St. Matthew and how for Pope Francis as a young person, this picture became deeply important in his own call and conversion. But I think of all of Caravaggio's paintings, the one that speaks to me the most is the one that depicts tonight's gospel, the encounter between Jesus and Thomas, the week after Jesus' resurrection. You and I know well this story, not only because we have just heard it proclaimed in our gospel, but I think for many of us, we closely associate with St. Thomas and that his experience, especially in the midst of his doubts and questions, resonate with us. But sadly, we also recognize that it is because of today's gospel that Thomas gets the nickname Doubting Thomas, and it is a nickname that stayed with him not only during his earthly life, but has continued to stay with him to this day. And sadly, I think Thomas often gets a bum rap by this nickname. It's not like he was the only apostle to have missed the mark, to put his foot in his mouth. 
And yet, he is the only one with a nickname like this that has gone down in history. Notice that we don't give Judas the nickname Sellout Judas, or we don't give St. Peter the nickname Denying Peter, but somehow Thomas is known forever in history for that one moment in which he doubts he questions the claim of the other apostles that they have seen the risen Lord on that first Easter Sunday night. In tonight's gospel taken from St. John, we actually hear of two different post-resurrection appearances of Jesus in the span of one week. The first post-resurrection appearance of Jesus happens late on that first Easter Sunday night when all of the apostles, except for Thomas, are gathered in the upper room. These apostles are huddled in fear. St. John tells us, in fact, that the doors are locked, for they are afraid that what the authorities had done to Jesus, they will do to the apostles. And therefore, in fear and trepidation, they huddle together. And it is in the midst of this fear and trepidation that that first Easter Sunday night, Jesus comes to them and appears and reveals himself to them. He says, look at my hands, look at my side. And immediately they recognize that it is Jesus risen from the dead. And they are filled not only with a sense of joy and peace, but they are filled with a sense of newness of life. And they are filled with a sense of joy that they can continue on with the ministry and the mission of Jesus. But Thomas is not with them at that moment for some reason. And when he does return to the upper room and the other ten tell of their experience of witnessing the presence of the risen Jesus, we hear that Thomas is filled with a sense of doubt, with a sense of questioning. In fact, St. John tells us, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Thomas was filled with this sense of doubt, with this sense of uncertainty. He knew what he had seen at the foot of the cross. He knew what he had seen at the tomb as they placed the body of Jesus in it. How is it that Jesus could now, three days later, be raised from the dead? And so his doubts and questions are very normal and natural. And so until he is able to prove for himself that Jesus is alive, he is filled with these doubts. We hear that a week later, that Jesus returns back to the upper room where the apostles and this time Thomas are gathered. It's interesting that St. John tells us that the doors are no longer locked, but they are merely shut. The apostles are no longer fearful or afraid. They have been set on fire with new life because of Jesus' resurrection and his commission to go and to share the good news. And as Jesus appears in the room, he speaks to Thomas directly. He knows of Thomas's questions and doubts, and he wants to be able to affirm, to strengthen, to encourage Thomas. Notice in the interaction between Jesus and Thomas that Jesus doesn't deride Thomas for his doubts. Notice that Jesus doesn't mock Thomas for his questioning, but instead he wants to help Thomas to come to know and believe in him. He wants to take away his doubts and fill him with that same peace and newness of life that the other apostles had experienced. And this is where, going back to Cavargio's painting, that he does such a marvelous job in depicting this scene and helping us to be able to appreciate what is happening. In the painting, Jesus is in the center of the room, and we see the look of shock on Thomas's face. And with one hand, Jesus opens the cloak to show Thomas the wound, and with the other hand, he is holding Thomas's hand, guiding him to feel the wound, 
As we know that Thomas had said, unless he saw and touched, he would not believe. And so Jesus, with gentleness, helped Thomas to be able to see beyond his questions, beyond his doubts, and to be able to embrace the truth that he was indeed alive, that he was risen. And with this tenderness, with this love, with this intimacy, Thomas is able to recognize that it is Jesus, risen from the dead. Thomas no longer has to touch the wound, but he simply says to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Thomas is able to make now this great declaration of faith. Because he has seen, he is believed, and he knows who Jesus is. He is his Lord and his God. But it's interesting in Cavargio's depiction of this scene, he also places two of the other apostles in very close proximity to Thomas. They are watching very carefully not only what Thomas is doing, but they are watching very closely what Jesus is doing. It is almost as if instinctively Carvaggio knew that these other apostles also had inner doubts and questions in their heart, but were too afraid to ask them or to voice them. But they too wanted to see the wounds. They too wanted to make sure that Jesus was alive and risen from the dead. And so they too witnessed the great miracle and the mystery of Christ rising from the dead. I think these post-resurrection stories today in our gospel and this painting by Cavaggio remind us that like Thomas and the two other apostles, that it's also okay for us in the midst of our journey of faith to have doubts, to have questions, to have queries, not only about our faith in God, but also about what is happening in life. That it is not wrong or sinful to question, to doubt, to wonder, but in fact it can become a healthy means to help us to be able to grow and to deepen in our faith. As a priest friend of mine often said, Jesus meets us in the messiness of our lives, and he brings us to a new foundation, to a new place, to a new serenity. This is what he did for Thomas that day, and this is what Jesus continues to desire to do for each and every one of us. He wants to take us out of the messiness that exists in our lives and to help us to be able to understand, like Thomas, that he is our Lord and our God. This is why as we gather this evening on this second Sunday of our Easter journey, we also mark Divine Sunday, as promulgated some time ago by St. John Paul the Great. Divine Mercy Sunday is this opportunity, as all of our scripture readings this weekend remind us, to be immersed in that great mercy and tenderness of God who desires to meet us in the messiness of our life, who desires to embrace us in the midst of our questions and our doubts, and who gently and lovingly and with great mercy helps us to find the way so that we can continue to recognize him as our truth, our way, and our life. And how do we do so? We do so in imitation of St. Thomas, recognizing that Jesus is my Lord and my God. We do so like St. Faustina, who received this revelation of Jesus as being the bearer of divine mercy and being able to cry out like her, Jesus, I trust in you. This is what St. Thomas did. This is what the other apostles did. This is what we hear the early church in our first reading in the Acts of the Apostles did. And this is what we are called to do day in and day out. In the midst of our joys and our sufferings, in the midst of our blessings and our challenges, to know that God is there for us, to be able to exclaim like Thomas, my Lord and my God, 
and to be able to be like St. Faustina and to trust in Jesus, especially in those moments of doubt, in those moments of questioning, in those moments of despair. And so this evening, as we continue to rejoice in the gift of these Easter mysteries, let us pray that we will continue to recognize the presence of the risen Jesus in our midst, and let us allow ourselves to be filled with that Easter joy, so that like the apostles and the early church, we may go out to others and to be able to share the good news that Jesus is in fact our Lord and our God. My dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? It didn't sound very convincing. Let's try that again as an Easter people and actually mean it. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. And now, my sisters and brothers, with humbled hearts, let us turn to our gracious God with some of our petitions. that all members of the church come to deeper belief in the risen Jesus who dwells in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all nations of the world grow in lasting peace that is a gift of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who are poor and in need be supported by the care and concern of this believing community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us gathered here may rejoice in the risen Jesus, be changed by his spirit, and receive new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of an infinite mercy, in faith and trust we place these our needs before you, knowing that you will hear and answer them, for they have been offered through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, 
fruit of the earth and work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Serge, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clemnant, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, 
and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them. Fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us share a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Reminder for our communion procession of all the directions of our ushers. The communion hymn is in the gather, page 831, take and eat, page 831.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. The closing hymn is in the Gather, page 522. Glory and praise to our God, page 522. Oh well, there's a malfunction. The the batteries are out. Sorry. <laughs>